Good evening, everybody. Good to be in church. Good to see y'all. Praise the Lord. Take your Bible this evening, if you would, Proverbs chapter 9, the book of Proverbs. We're going to be tonight in chapter 9 for just a little bit, and then chapter 8, and then chapter 1. Three passages that have some synonymous things going on. I believe they'd be a help to us this evening if we take the help that God would have for us. I say this somewhat frequently, but brethren, everyone in this room can get help if you want it. You take the Bible, let it help you, and I believe we have some help tonight. Uh, Let's read from verse 1 down to verse 6. Proverbs chapter 9, from verse 1 down to verse 6. The Bible says, Wisdom hath builded her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beasts. She hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. She hath sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding. So we see at the beginning of this chapter, and it continues even further, that wisdom is speaking. It says in verse 3, after it says that she hath sent forth her maidens, she crieth upon the highest places of the city. Now just, just by way of a contrast, look with me at verse 13, where we're down to the end of the chapter. Verse 13 says, a foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege we have to be in church already, Lord. It's been such a blessing to be around the brethren, to be able to sing songs that magnify you. Lord, I thank you that you left ivory palaces, come to a world of woe. God, we don't deserve your your goodness to us. We don't deserve your kindness to us. And Lord, we don't even deserve to be here tonight. And yet we are here by the grace of God. We ask you now, would you please open our minds and hearts and help us to understand the passages that we look at? Lord, would you speak to us in a way that only you can, that we might gain understanding that only you can provide? And Lord, I pray that we'd be different from having been here tonight. I pray that each of your people would be encouraged and strengthened. And Lord, that uh, we'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory that you are due for being such a great God as you are. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. So we find in this passage, two things are going on. According to the proverb, we first see that wisdom is prevalent. Wisdom opens the passage. Wisdom built her house. The first thing that we notice as we look at this is wisdom is personified in the feminine as though wisdom is the queen of all that is excellent. She speaks. She speaks to people. Not only is she speaking, but if you notice in verse 3, the Bible tells us that she had sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Wisdom. We think wisdom is something that we attain. Wisdom is something that James tells us if we lack, we can ask of God and he'll give it to us. But as we read the passage that we're going to read, chapter 9, chapter 8, and chapter 1, we find that wisdom is speaking to people. Wisdom wants to to emphasize herself in every life. We see what wisdom is. She describes herself in chapter 8. She says, I am wisdom. And we think of wisdom oftentimes just as a generic I wish I had more wisdom. And and as I studied this and I thought of this, and it's amazing, and maybe I'm crazy, but wisdom is one of those things that you ought to develop a relationship with wisdom. It's personified as a woman. It's personified in the the feminine sense. And it's like you want to have a relationship with her. She's, She's calling Don't you want wisdom? Don't you want me? She's crying to the simple and saying, hey, don't be simple. 
That's what wisdom is doing. And then when we got down to verse 13, we see something else. We see a contrast. But the contrast isn't a personification. The the contrast is a reality. It is the foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. Well, that's the opposite of wisdom. As a matter of fact, if you look up the word simple, it means weak in intellect, not wise, and silly. Well, the Bible says this woman is simple and knoweth nothing, but that doesn't stop her from being very loud. That's an amazing truth, isn't it? Don't you wish that only the people who knew what they're talking about could speak? But often, brethren, we get all kinds of information and we get all kinds of so-called help from people who don't have a clue what they're talking about. And they're crying out the same way that wisdom is crying out. And they're trying to, to get your attention the same way that wisdom is trying to get your attention. And so we see foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city to call passengers who go right on their ways. So in, in verse 3, we saw wisdom crieth upon the highest places of the city. I mean, she's trying to get your attention. In verse 4, it talks about what she cries. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And for him that wanteth understanding, she saith unto him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. This isn't isn't seduction like you find in Proverbs chapter 7. This is wisdom crying to people, Come, get help. Get help. You're simple. You lack understanding. Come this way and I can give you understanding. And that's a contrast to what is said from the foolish woman in chapter, uh, um, in verse 13. In verse 15, to call passengers who go right on their ways. And notice what she says, whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith unto him, stolen waters are sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant that's the message of the fool it's better to live on the edge and it's better to have have stolen and secret but notice where wisdom is crying in verse 3 i know we're going back and forth looking at these and we'll, we'll move on in a few minutes but in verse 3 wisdom is crying upon the highest places of the city There's nothing secret and stolen. There's nothing to try to woo the passerby. It's a declaration of help. That's wisdom. Help. I can help you. You need me. You can't live your life without wisdom. And wisdom cannot be to us just something we obtain. We have to look at it like the Bible presents it. Because a lot of of things, and we'll see this as we go along in the passages that we're going to look at tonight, but a lot of times... Wisdom is the the missing ingredient in our decisions. Wisdom is needed at the time of making decisions. And we're going to see this because wisdom speaks these truths. A lot of people want wisdom after they made their decision. They're like, I don't know what to do. And wisdom cries, you should have listened. Because wisdom was there, but she was ignored. And then people, oh, but, but I need help. Too little, too late. Wisdom cries to the simple before the decisions are made. Wisdom cries and says, if you're simple, come this direction. I can help you. And that's what we find wisdom to be. Now, before we go on to the chapter 8, notice what she says in verse 5. Wisdom speaking says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish, and live. Wisdom is crying, brethren, for people to forsake the foolish. Yet, how many people, their their companionship is fools. And wisdom says, a companion of fools shall be destroyed. But we forsook wisdom for our companions of fools. And she says, look, 
if you're going to live, you have to forsake the foolish. That's what wisdom would cry. That's what she's crying in the passage. And go in the way of understanding. Verse 7, He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame, and he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. Now wisdom is still speaking. Wisdom is, is providing help. Verse 8, Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. And then verse 10, wisdom, wisdom is speaking. She's calling from the, from, from the top, housetops. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. She's crying to the simple, but we have to have a place to start. And wisdom gives that place to start. Come eat of my bread. But here's the beginning of wisdom. Fear God. And get to know God. The knowledge of the holy is understanding. You know, the world loves wisdom. Colossians chapter 2 talks about the philosophies of the world and how they spoil people, ruin people. Because people love knowledge. They love understanding. They, they dig so deep into things. And wisdom would cry to you that dig so deep into foolish things that are going to burn. And she says, no, fear God and know Him. Stop looking at your conspiracies and stop looking at these things. and stop. But look at God. Because it's not wisdom to go down these dark, deep things. Education robs people of wisdom. They have all of these smarts. But there's the difference between wisdom and knowledge, and I think we've done this before, knowledge is, is, is wonderful, right? It's good to have some knowledge. She said the knowledge of the holy. It's good to know some things, but wisdom is how to use that knowledge. So does it really matter how much people obtain and puff their brains up with all of this knowledge if you don't know how to use it? Like what good is a doctor who knows every bone in your body and all, all of these different things that they can... If they don't understand that it's God who's the great physician, they're, on, they're only going to be so good. You're missing something. All that knowledge and you lack wisdom. You don't know how to apply the knowledge that you've obtained because you lack wisdom. So wisdom cries and says, you need me. Don't live without me. Verse 11, for by me thy days shall be multiplied and the years of thy life shall be increased. Wisdom cries, for by me thy days shall be multiplied. If you don't, you don't have me, you're going to have a short life and a miserable one. You're going to need some wisdom. And then verse 12, if thou be wise... Thou shalt be wise for thyself, but if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. That's the first thing that we see that wisdom is, is speaking, and she's, she's giving an ultimatum. You can have wisdom. You can, you, can, you can obtain what I'm offering you, or you can scorn it. And the Bible, oh, so many times, brethren, will talk about the wisdom of God and the wisdom of God and understanding the Lord and, and the things that God allows us to know. And then how many, even of, of so-called God's people, who will scorn certain things out of the Bible. And wisdom says, you're going to bear it. You're going to bear it. You're, you're rejecting wisdom. Now move over to chapter 8. In chapter 8 we find... In verse 1, and we're going backwards in, in, in these passages, but I believe it's because they, they're explained as they go through them. Verse 8 says, Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of the high places by the way, in the places of the, of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in of the doors. So once again, as we saw in chapter 9, we also see in chapter 8 that wisdom is not, is not the silent type. 
Wisdom cries out. Wisdom is a street preacher. Wisdom is, hey, don't keep going without me. She's crying out. It, it's interesting because as we compare that to the passage we read at the end of chapter 9, and we also look at chapter 7, look at chapter 7. In verse 6, the Bible says, For at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and behold, among the simple ones I discerned, among the youths, a young man, void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And I believe this, this strange woman that we find in, in chapter 7, we find also a foolish woman in chapter 9 who is clamorous, simple, and knoweth nothing. And I believe that there's a contrast here b between the, these women and wisdom. Because wisdom is not found in the black, dark night on a corner someplace. Wisdom is, is in the gates of the city crying out. She's not waiting for some corner someplace to let me get you all by yourself. And there's something weird about people who are. There's something off about that, brethren. Why we got to hide that? It lacks wisdom. But wisdom is crying out. In verse 4, unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be of an understanding heart. Wisdom is even talking to fools. Wisdom's like, stop being a fool. Right? Let, let, let foolishness be your ex. You need to get to know wisdom. I'm serious. Like, let that be something you put away. I need to know wisdom. And wisdom is crying out. In verse 6, notice what wisdom speaks. And brethren, everything in life, everything, because we're going to see this as we go through this, everything in life is compared to wisdom. You need God's wisdom. We, we, Proverbs is an entire book of wisdom. It's, it's there to help you understand life. And so many people, they say, well, I know that the Bible says this, but I believe this. Well, you just threw away wisdom. Well, I know, I know that God, he, I think it's the Lord's preference. Maybe, maybe that's just, uh, you're just throwing away wisdom. Let God be true, but every man a liar. Sound wisdom. Notice what wisdom says in verse 6 here. For I will speak of excellent things in the opening of my lips shall be right things. I, 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 don't, I don't want to, we could, we could go all night in this passage, and I'm not trying to do that, but, but guys, what kinds of things do we listen to? What kinds of things do we allow to influence us? Because we, we think we're getting wisdom, but you could just put what you're listening to up against that verse, and you can find out if it's wise. Because wisdom speaks of excellent things. It goes back to Philippians chapter 4 when the Apostle Paul is telling the church at Philippi what kinds of things to think about. And we say, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just. And he's going on. What, it, what are you allowing to affect your mind and your heart? Because wisdom says, I speak in a specific category. And a lot of times, what, what God's people listen to doesn't always fit that category. And so what we're doing is we're filling ourselves with foolishness and hoping to get wiser. And it doesn't work. So she speaks right things. Verse 7, for my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. So if you're going to get some wisdom... I'm just going to come out of my lane for just a second and, and just real nudge you a little bit. Sometimes people, we, I don't know when, when YouTube became the place that everybody gets all of this wisdom, but it is. Everybody goes to YouTube for help and every category. And I remember a friend of ours recommending some YouTube videos. And you want to learn about this subject. 
I'm going to leave the subject alone. But you want to learn about this subject. Now, this guy, he has a lot to offer about this subject. But, be careful, he does use a lot of curse words. Guys, you shouldn't watch that for any time whatsoever. You're not going to get wisdom mixed with filth. What did wisdom say? She said, for my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Wisdom doesn't come paired up with foolish filth. Wisdom comes in purity. That's why the best wisdom is this wisdom. We don't go all the world's wisdom. They don't even know what they're talking about half the time. It's contrary to the scriptures. Wisdom is right here, brethren. Then she says, in verse 9, they are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. So when you, when you got a piece of wisdom, you find it's not all that complicated. It's not meant to be a weave I'm going around your elbow to get to your thumb and trying to figure out what is, what is that supposed to mean. Wisdom is plain and clear. A lot of times we, we come to our fork in the road in our life and we don't know which way to go and let me tell you something guys the bible teaches us that god is not the author of confusion so we're like i just don't know what i'm supposed to do here take a breath back up go back to the lord and find wisdom and it's not going to be all kinds of discombobulated and it's not going to be all kinds of confusing and it's not going to stress you out and make you anxious Amen. it's going to be clear because that's how God speaks to his people. All too often we're confused and we're, we're, we're set on our heels. We're rocked back because I don't, I don't know. There's, there's three options. No, there's not. No, there's not. Check, check it out. Go back to the word of God. You'll be all right. Wisdom is plain. Verse 10. Receive my instruction and not silver. And knowledge rather than choice. Good. I'm really trying. I'm trying to move through these. Brethren, wisdom is more important than money. Wisdom is more valuable than money. Don't. Don't pick your job. Don't pick the overtime. Don't pick all of those things over what will help you. Yeah, you can make a few extra bucks, but that's not near the value of the wisdom that you pass on. And that's what she's teaching. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Pick anything in this world that you have to have. Wisdom says, it's not worth it. It's not worth giving up wisdom for that. Because wisdom's with you. Everything in this life will burn, but the wisdom that you obtain doesn't. It keeps you right. It helps you. It's more permanent. Wisdom is a very spiritual thing, brethren. This is a very, I know, we look at, this is Proverbs. But the spiritual help that wisdom provides, you can't, you can't touch that with anything. You need wisdom. And now verse 12. Wisdom again. To, re, to refresh our memory in verse 1, wisdom is crying. In verse 12, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Now, a lot of times we quote that verse, right? Many of us know that verse. Praise the Lord, you should. It's good. It's a great verse. But we think, in the forward mouth do I hate, and we make that God. You know who's talking? Obviously, God is wisdom. We're going to see it as we go along. But wisdom so if we have any wisdom about us, the things that wisdom hates, we hate. And the things that wisdom loves, we love. And she says, the fear of the Lord, which we learned in chapter 9 of verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And she says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil and pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate wisdom. Now notice, brethren, before we go on, wisdom is not talking about all the things that she hates in everybody else. That's also, I should hate that in me. Like, man, I, it's easy to hate pride in, in you guys. I hate when they rear up in pride, this guy or that guy or th this lady, or th you know. 
Well, shouldn't we be just as frustrated when pride rears its ugly head in my heart? If I have any wisdom, yes. Wisdom says, no, I don't need that. Verse 14, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. She's going on. This is, wis- this is what you need in your life. This is the best resume. You want to hire wisdom. You read this, you think, you know, resumes are an interesting thing, I think, for Christians especially. I mean, you got to brag on yourself and puff yourself up and talk about how wonderful you are. And that's just awkward because we're supposed to, as Christians, be humble people. And we're not supposed to go on about how great we are. But every now and again, we got to write a resume. You still want the job, don't you? You don't want to hire me. I'm just nobody. I can't do anything. I couldn't get up in the morning if it weren't, you know. Amen. Uh, next. <laughs> but wisdom writes her resume, and you want to hire wisdom. Wisdom says, by me, kings rule, and they don't do it without me. By me, princes declare justice, and they can't do it without me. Now you imagine writing a resume and you, you give that to, to your future boss. Buddy, you can't make it without me, man. He's thinking, man, I've been here this long. No, no, you can't make it another day without me. That's wisdom. You need wisdom. She's selling herself properly in this aspect. Verse 18, riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold. My revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. And I will fill their treasures. You know what makes people money? Wise choices. Really it is diligence and all those things but that does you could be the hardest worker on the planet if you don't have the intelligence you're not going to make it you'll get so far but you got to have some wisdom on what to do with that and how to make this decision and how to prepare for the next step and she says i can fill your treasury because i'm wisdom and then we see Verse 22, the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from the everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth. Wisdom is going back a ways. And wisdom's like, when God told the ocean, this is as far as you go, I was there. You need me. Then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Let me ask you a question. I know this is a, this is a weird message in some aspect. I get it. However, it is needful. Brethren, What is wisdom to you? Do we look at that as something, I need it, but I already have it, I could use a little more? Because wisdom is speaking, and she says, I was God's delight. And I believe Solomon pursued wisdom. God made him wise, but Solomon pursued wisdom. I want wisdom. He craved wisdom. More than he craved knowledge, he craved wisdom. Because it doesn't matter how much you know if you don't know what to do with that knowledge. 
but she speaks of God's delight. And then in verse 31, she says, Rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Almost like she has a personality. And I think she does. I mean, I know Solomon wrote this. But Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived. And he wrote this in this way to give us a perspective that we often don't don't take. That wisdom has a personality. Do you know the closer you get to God, the more that it changes your personality? That's just a reality. It's not just about, okay, I'm closer with Him, so I know Him. But it changes even how you behave. It changes everything about you. If we have a relationship with wisdom, and I believe if you have a relationship with God, you also have a relationship with wisdom. But it changes the way you behave. It changes the way you think. Her personality rubs off on you. The things that wisdom hates, you hate. The things that wisdom loves, you love. The things that wisdom provides, you get. Because of that. And then she says in verse 32, Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise, refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. This is a person who wants wisdom. I'm waiting for wisdom. I'm desiring, I'm pursuing wisdom. Verse 35, For whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. Here's what I believe. This is, you take it for however you want to. I believe there's a lot of people who want to find favor with God, but do not apply wisdom. I don't know whether or not they just don't have it, or they don't use it, or they have ignored it. But wisdom teaches how to obtain favor with God. And there's a lot of people who want favor with God. But they do not exercise the wisdom it takes to get it. You you don't obtain favor with God your way. You're going to obtain favor with God God's way. Right? Every every husband in this room knows, okay, there's there's a right way and there's a wrong way to communicate certain things in your house. Every wife in here should know the same thing. Right? There's a right way to do it. There's a wrong way to do it. And yet so many people trying to obtain favor with God the wrong way. They're just beating their head against a wall, trying to, trying to get this far. And wisdom says, you find me, you find life, you obtain favor of God. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Now, nobody in their right mind would say, I hate wisdom, right? Right? But a lot of people in their actions hate wisdom because wisdom says this is wrong it's arrogant well wisdom hates arrogance so it doesn't matter if i say i love wisdom if i am arrogant i don't that's just the reality brethren it doesn't matter what your words are it matters what your life is now one more we're almost there look at proverbs chapter one now all of these Almost, almost like wisdom is the builder in chapter 9. Wisdom is the preacher in, in chapter 8. And then in chapter 1, we find wisdom again. We're going to start in verse 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of the concourse. In the openings of the gates, in the city, she uttereth her words, saying. So once again, same, same thing we've seen, we've seen this twice already. Wisdom isn't quiet. Wisdom isn't subtle. Wisdom is, hey, here I am. But she's crying. And in verse 22, she's not crying the same things that we've seen in chapter 8 and 9. This time she's crying, how long, ye simple ones? Will you love simplicity? In other words, why do you keep ignoring me? How long are you going to ignore me? How long are you going to keep walking by? How loud can I cry? Brethren, I don't don't know how many people in this room read their Bible every day, but I, I pray that it's all of you. I don't think it's all of us, but I pray that it is. 
how long are you going to open this book and read it and ignore what it teaches? That's wisdom crying out. How long, you simple ones? Now, we talked about simple is weak in intellect, not wise and silly. That's a silly person. How long, you silly man? How long, you silly girl? Are you going to ignore wisdom? How long that scorners delight in their scorning? A scorner is a scoffer. It's a derider, one who scoffs at religion, its ordinances, and teachers, and who makes a mock of sin and the judgments and threatenings of God against sinners. That's what a scorner is. As a person who says, I know God said he doesn't like this, but it's what I'm going to do. You're a scorner. Even if you claim to be saved, you're still by definition a scorner because you're ignoring what God said. That's what a scorner is. And so wisdom says, how long, scorner, do you delight in your scorning? And fools hate knowledge. Now, once again, nobody in here would say, I hate knowledge. I hate wisdom. But she's speaking of the reality, not your words. The reality is, well, I'm teaching you something and you're ignoring it. Well, you hate it. Okay? Verse 23. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Look, it's like, how long are you going to go that direction? Come back. Come back to wisdom. Get the help you need. But notice what she says. Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Don't you wish that God would just dump wisdom into you and you don't have to do anything to get it? I mean, don't you wish that God would just dump into you all of the desires for righteousness and just kick your flesh to the curb? In every aspect. Nevertheless, she says, I called and you refused because God still gave you a choice. You can take wisdom, you can obey the word of God, you can yield to the spirit of God, or you can ignore it. That's the reality of it. And he, she says, I've called you, refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have said it not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. Every time wisdom cried in the chief place, every time you opened the Bible and God said, this is, this is my way, every time the preacher showed you what the Word of God declared for your life, and you said, no, I'm not doing that. Wisdom said, you said it not, my counsel. Then she said, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as a desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they shall call upon me, but I will not answer. I don't know how many times in my life, and I've witnessed it in other people's life, where there's a decision in front of you and there's a wisdom. We have to admit at some point or another we've said, no, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to do this. Wisdom was right here. I'm doing this. And then that road led to one thing, and then another thing, and then another thing. And at the end of it, you're like, I don't know what to do. I need wisdom. And wisdom says, I was back here. And you left me hanging. I can't fix it now. Wisdom is in the decision-making phase of life. It's not in the results part of life. There's a, and, and we're, some people might say, well, I'm past that point. We're never past that point. Every day you're making the decision of some sort. And if you're not going to exercise wisdom, you're going you're to suffer the consequences yeah. for not exercising wisdom. This is like the most practical of things to think, but it's so true, brethren. Because she says, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Every passage that wisdom is speaking, you know what she says? The fear of the Lord. It wasn't about... It's, 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 just, it's hard to explain because wisdom is the fear of the Lord. But she's deflecting. She's saying, this, isn't, this is about you and God. And at the time where God would have given you the sense to make the right decision, you didn't. And now everything went wrong. 
And you're like, now I want the Lord to intervene. And he said, that was back here. That's, where that, that's when that decision was. You know, there's a, there, there, you're going to make a decision today that you can't fix tomorrow. You can, there might be someone here who's never accepted Jesus Christ. You might not get another chance. Amen. Wisdom says, come on now. <laughs> don't, don't ask for wisdom when you're burning in hell. Amen. That time is over. Right. You understand? That, that's, a, that's the most dramatic of any instances. But wisdom says, hey, apply truth. Take the knowledge and do something right with it. Verse 28, she says, Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsels. They despised all my reproof. So when wisdom says, don't do that, fool. And you say, I'm doing it anyway. She says, well, you're going to want wisdom later on. and It's not going to be there because wisdom was right here telling you, knock it off. Amen. Therefore, shall they eat the bread of, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But... Whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Wisdom says, listen up. Now wisdom, personified as this wonderful woman that we read about all, all tonight, who just wants to help. Amen. What a, what a way to articulate a truth. The Bible just puts it in this way that says, listen to me. I'm crying. I'm begging you. But brethren, that's every time you open the scripture. Yeah. Wisdom is crying out. Crying out. This is what God thinks. And this is what God's desires are. And this is what God would have for your life. And this is how God would want you to respond. This is how God would want you to think of lost sinners. This is how God would want you to behave in this situation. And this is the attitude that God would have you to have. And wisdom is crying out from the pages of this book. Amen. How long, you simple ones? How long? Until we realize we can ignore it for so long. And there's a time where it's over. Wisdom and her teaching. Let's stand. Father, thank you for the opportunity we have to gather together tonight. Lord, I sure appreciate the, the way that this is so recorded for us. It sure is a blessing. And I pray, Father, that you'd open our hearts and minds, help us to understand just the the simplicity of this great truth that we might obtain and have the wisdom that you would so give us. Help us to seek it, pursue it, and heed the wisdom that you've given to us. Lord, we love you. We'll give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen.